ಸಾಗ್ರಜಾತಾಂಗಿತಾಂಗಿತಾಂಗಿತಾಂಗಿತಾಂಗಿತಾಂಗಿತಾಂಗಿತಾಂಗಿತಾಂಗಿತಾ
midpoint. From here, the living entity can choose either degradation or liberation from reincarnation. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. So last one, somebody can continue. I'll read. If a living being makes some degree of spiritual progress in his present life, then in the next life he is allowed to continue from that point. The Lord tells his disciple Arjuna in Bhagavad Gita uh, chapter 2, uh, uh, 4, 0. Uh, in this endeavor, Krishna consciousness, there is no loss or diminution and a little advancement on this path can protect one from the greatest type of fear, returning in a lower than human form in the next life. The soul methods develop its inherent spiritual quality through many lives until it no longer has to reincarnate in a material body until it returns to its original home in the spiritual world. Coming back, the signs of reincarnation. Thank you, Prabhuji. So, so before we go into uh, the discussion further. I would request everyone if they are comfortable, they can switch on the video so that we, it will be personal discussion and we will be having nice interactive session. So thank you. Um, so this is very nice passage. So I uh, um, hope everyone has read uh, before coming to session also. So any any one point or two point you like the most or that touches your heart, please share it. So from the passage, whatever you like the most, we'll just start the discussion. So please, uh, who want to go first? One or two points you like the most? Yes, ma'am. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Uh, with this passage, I just wanted to tell one thing that um, as the saying goes, or you read what you saw. So it means that like you get what you deserve. If you are into a spiritual life, so your next life will be in a good way. So the good karma may be, you know, taken into your next life. So basically the whole passage is all about the spiritual life, spiritual values. So um, in whatever you put, put your time, talent or energy into your spiritual life, so that will be carried forward. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, Mataji, for sharing. Mataji, there was some disturbance from your audio. You can just check. Uh, but yeah, we, we could able to hear you. So uh, yeah, somebody else. What the uh, what is the heart touching point for you from this passage? Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Uh, yes, Mataji. So uh, I read it and uh, like I have come to a conclusion, like I feel that whatever, like whether we are happy or sad in this, um, like in this uh, janam, in this janma, I think whether we are suffering, like when we suffer, sometimes we might take wrong path. So I think still if we stay in God's consciousness, Krishna consciousness, and so that don't spoil our next janma, like I have understood this. So we, even if we are suffering a lot, I think in, uh, we should not blame God. We should um, accept the fact that somewhere it's our own karma which has brought us here and try to be good, try to, you know, be conscious towards God and so that our next janma at least will be nice and will be peaceful. Hare Krishna. Wow, nice point, Mataji. Thank you for sharing. Yes. Nice, nice, Mataji. So basically what you are saying, Mataji, that individual soul is responsible for own karma. We should not be blaming others or Krishna for the things, uh, the karmic reactions that we are suffering. Very nice point, Mataji. Um, any further realizations after reading the passage, maybe related to soul transmigration? Hare Krishna, I, will, I would like to add here. Uh, while the entire, what I could understand from the passage is, uh, that we do not have any control over the next life. The only control what we have is only in this lifetime. And the way we can progress is by doing the, um, the spiritual journey which has been given to us by the masters. 
and that is the only way because uh, and this is the only life what we have because nobody is aware whether what next life we would be having it could be a better life or depending upon our uh, thoughts and actions and at the time we could go down into the uh, not in the human race but it could be any of the other race so it is only this lifetime wherein one can do bhakti do sadhana and do service to gur gurus and vaishnavas and um, uh fruit i mean fructify the life what has been given yeah 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 prabhu ji i'll just add to it there is no loss uh, specifically if we are into the krishna consciousness in this life uh, there is no loss or dilution in our next life also if we are in the krishna consciousness in the past but we are we uh, we wish to attain the godhead still at that point of time in the next life we will start at the point where we left so that is one of the very uh, i mean profitable or or a blessing of being into this krishna consciousness yeah so this is the shloka which prabhu is quoting and it is given in our passage also right at the end from bhagavad gita 240 and i think last uh, session also we discussed this neha vikrama no shasti pratyavayo na vidyate swalpam api asya dharmasya prayato mahato bhaya right in this endeavor there is no loss or diminution and a little advancement on this path can protect one from the most dangerous type of fear and what is the most dangerous type of fear going to the lower birth right lower than the human form so uh, we'll just read this last paragraph of this purport very nice prabhupad is giving so can somebody read i read to material yes. activity and their results and with the body but working krishna consciousness carries a person again to krishna consciousness even after the loss of the body at least one is sure to have a chance in the next life of being born again as a human being either in the family of a great cultured brahmana or in a rich aristocratic family that will give one a further chance for ever elevation this is the unique quality of work done in krishna consciousness yeah so this is the unique quality of the work done in krishna consciousness right so you will get higher birth only and if you are continuing this krishna consciousness definitely there is chance to go back go, go back home back to godhead right so this is very nice point uh, everyone has shared here and avinash prabhu yeah punit prabhu you want to share something yes prabhu. hare krishna prabhu ji uh, uh, prabhu ji uh, yes uh, uh, one point is uh, i agree there is i think uh, we are somewhere uh, in our lifetime where we can actually decide that okay uh, we want to choose either degradation or liberation but uh, my first question actually it's a question uh, these passages that we are reading are from specific book or shila prabhupad book uh, like science of reincarnation yes prabhu is so, this a book yeah this is book from uh, shila prabhupad only yeah coming back uh, is the name of book and uh, uh, this was the uh, passage from that book only so whatever we are reading i mean we are in this generally in our bhakti sessions we are reading from the shila prabhupas book only and uh, these passages are like uh, important passages uh, collected from all the like science of self relation was the uh, book last time we discussed from uh, the passage from that and uh, sometimes we'll get uh, bhagavad gita uh, uh, shlokas also in the passages and sometimes from other books bhagavatam shrimad bhagavatam or uh, the small books message of god had or many so all the books actually uh, is having the vedic literature uh, ved, uh, vedic science only from bhagavad gita bhagavatam so prabhupad has given uh, small small books also to understand uh, with theme thematic uh, means he presented with the theme also few uh, a few um, basically the spiritual uh, this matter very nicely so that we can understand yeah this this belongs to like uh, this category or that or category so and very simple way but he connected all the things even in his passage 
right right now what we discuss is he, he is giving a, a quotation from the bhagavad gita only right uh, 240 he is giving reference of that so like that basically in a simpler word like prabhupada has given a curated you know whatever is applicable to us right he has given uh, what is applicable what is the sweetest thing what is the uh, uh, like um, full package you know he has given very nicely in terms of his lectures in terms of the conversation in terms of in you know, different books and the devotees have chosen some of these sections and we will be just going through that discussing that and once we realize that definitely we are progressing in our krishna consciousness yes prabhu okay. thank you prabhu prabhu ji uh, i was actually thinking on this point where in the passage i mean in the i think second last uh, passage it is given that the soul in a human body stands at the evolutionary midpoint so can we understand from this statement that when we start realizing or let's say for me as a soul uh, because now i have you know come to uh, in con- you know come in the contact of devotees and started chanting so can i understand that this is the point where i am standing at the midpoint or midpoint is somewhere you know is to come or midpoint uh, has passed in some previous life so how to understand uh, this thing where i am you know in this lifetime is it really the midpoint or is midpoint is yet to come yeah so basically what is meant here was the human life is a junction yeah. like through that junction like you know okay we can go up or we can go down yeah. we can go up like yes you know there is a, like an, as we heard today we can go to the heavenly planets or we can go to the supreme abode right? that is there or also we incur some karmas we incur some sinful activities and then we go to the lower species like in either animals or you know other living entities right and then now like uh, by coming into the association of the devotees and by taking this process of chanting we are already going in this direction towards goloka we have already received the ticket and we are on the way <laughs> so we have to just continue the momentum <laughs> that's thank you prabhu ji hari krishna thank you prabhu ji hari hari krishna thank you prabhu ji for enlightening us <laughs> very nice question punit prabhu so uh, let's move forward any anyone uh, would like to share Uh, at the points from the passage hari krishna this is santosh uh, yes i wanted to have one question i think uh, this was related to uh, one of the topic where uh, it is telling in this passage that if a living being uh, make some degree of uh, spiritual progress uh, in his uh, present life then in the next life he is allowed to continue from that point so uh, in this life we are not sure like how much percentage of bhakti we have done or when we started was it the right time or uh, you know uh, how much longer we are going to survive and uh, are we able to continue this you know bhakti for the you know rest of the life so on on uh, what basis uh, so in this life if we are into this path uh, in the previous life uh, have we done some bhakti that is why we got uh, human life and then we are into this uh, circle Yes, very nice. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good question, Prabhu ji. Yeah. What is the cause of bhakti? Uh, is the cause of bhakti just uh, by chance or because of our karma? Uh, because this bhakti is so rare; it's a precious gift, you know. Uh, and this is coming really from the spiritual world. Uh, definitely, some of our material effort cannot really, you know, award us uh, that supreme gift. Uh, that's why it is said. गुरु कृष्ण प्रसाद पाई भक्ति लता देव ब्रह्मांड को भाग्यवान जीवा लाइक नो वेरी फ्यू फॉर्चुनेट सोल्स दे गेट दिस प्राइज दे गेट दिस लॉटरी एंड हाउ डू यू हाउ डू दे गेट द लॉटरी बाय भक्तिया संजात है भक्त थ्रू द एसोसिएशन ऑफ द डिवोटीज सम हाउ रादर लाइक शिला प्रभुपाद ही हैज साउड हिज मर्सी बाय हैविंग दैट स्लीपलेस नाइट्स एंड बाय डूइंग ऑल दिस यू नो अनसरमेंटेबल यू नो एक्टिविटीज राइटिंग दोस बुक्स writing the delivering those lectures and now his disciples or his grand disciples they are tirelessly kind of you know, serving them and because of their effort uh, because of because they have received 
and that mercy now they are sharing the mercy yeah? otherwise on our effort yes we can go to some extent but definitely to go back to god it is difficult without the association of the devotees so association of the devotee is the most important aspect in our bhakti was that okay prabhuji thank, thank you prabhuji uh prabhuji i had a question on in this line uh, why do few devotees get this association early whereas few devotees get it late and uh, we can see we have uh, many devotees on various age levels but why uh, let's say we had performed some good karma in the previous life so we are getting a chance but why it is for some it is early why it is late for some people la prabhupad was once asked uh, like why did uh, why did this krishna consciousness didn't come earlier you know, to usa and prabhupad you know, just answered you know you are not ready at that time <laughs> right so like definitely we can ask uh, the cause uh, you know all those things which is beyond our you know, concept beyond uh, like you know, it's inconceivable for us to really understand but at this point of time sila prabhupad is saying that you know uh, you must have heard that small lecture or prabhuji can share that we can achieve krishna consciousness in just one minute once we have the complete surrender once we chant sincerely the name of the lord once we serve sincerely the supreme lord we can achieve krishna consciousness we can right we can be ready ourselves you yeah? know to be in complete krishna consciousness krishna consciousness is not a matter of years you know like we don't become senior like oh, i have stayed in krishna conscious for maybe now 20 years and i don't become senior you know i see some of the devotees here you know who have been chanting so sincerely so regularly and you know, they are just like rocket you know they have just come and you know they have this progress so nicely <laughs> right so so it's not about like you know it's about our consciousness how seriously we take this process so yes we should feel repentant we should feel that okay abhi and train kafi late chal raha hai to abhi thoda sa aage badhane ka hai you know we have to accelerate our train but at the same time you know let's not be morose about let's not be you know having the sorrowful attitude about it yes you know we have sandeep pro he's very young you know i think he's doing just 12 you know Uh, there are some devotees so i think sakshi or they, they are very young you know they have you know and i know your daughter she is just you know a couple of years old and you know, they are so fortunate definitely because of their in a past life or you know because of the wonderful parents they get this opportunity to come into krishna consciousness so early right okay for us yes you know at least we should be grateful that we have got it now and how do we get this ticket now and really not really get diverted so that we have to take one more birth <laughs> and really proceed further prabhu ji thank Hare you so much hari krishna yes, yes please continue thank you prabhu ji so uh, any any other points uh, anybody would like to share so what basically uh what are the advantage of krishna consciousness we were discussing and prabhu ji was also uh, saying something so what do you think uh, if you are doing this is there any advantage or not or how krishna consciousness can help us to overcome this material misery right so any any thoughts on that hari krishna prabhu ji i wanted to add some uh, thoughts around this point because uh, uh, before uh, coming into uh, this uh, krishna consciousness before uh, you know maybe started uh, the chanting or uh, learning about bhagavad gita as it is i think uh, there were many holy books uh, we used to read there were many uh, you know different uh, practices uh, religious practices we used to follow like you know some vratas and then some uh, offering to god and multiple other things but i think uh, the right process or the right uh, method is something uh, which which i could feel you know after starting this uh, chanting joining these sessions learning more about uh, bhagavad gita in details and and the meaning of it how we can apply it so if we read uh, <laughs> read it uh, along with some devotees or with some uh, guru who is you know giving us that right knowledge to follow some right uh, you know uh, auspicious uh, practices in our life i think uh, every uh, second of our life becomes a worship 
and then we are connected with uh, god in a very different way and whatever activities we do or whatever uh, you know uh, worship activities we are doing it's it's more pure it's more connected and uh, the best part of it is after doing this uh, practices uh, i think uh, the the peace of mind is there and whatever uh, challenges we have in the life we get more strength to uh, go back to that challenges uh, work towards you know how we can uh, solve that problems or uh, we'll get you know some support which is maybe organized by the supreme god at for us for us to overcome that challenges and uh, i think if we are not looking or we are not able to see any clear path i think uh, the best way is to you know chant uh, and then uh, read some bhagavad gita for a good amount of time in your day- daily routine and uh, i i have a strong belief that you will find lot of answers for many problems uh, which you might be struggling you know on a day to day basis and uh, you you will be able to help yourself and then you know whoever is coming to you for support thank you prabhu ji yeah very nice so let's move forward and uh, i request kuntal prabhu so summarize and prabhu ji will uh, just move to the application section thank you prabhu ji hari krishna so a nice uh, realization shared by all the devotees here so we will try to summarize all of it here and maybe a few elements that we could add so as a summary uh, basically it, it is very a fact that we reincarnate and it, there has been lot of uh, examples stated in shrimad bhagavatam uh, as the references in bhagavad gita 2.13 it uh, explains the transmigration of the soul at the time of the death so a soul passes from the current body even from the baby to young uh, boyhood or youth and then old age and once we meet the death we are transmigrated to a new body again to continue our journey so that has already been even the shakti mata ji has mentioned about this so nice realization second point is basically uh, like mata ji mentioned here where uh, each soul is responsible for his own karma so what we do is all the actions that we perform it's like a seed we sow it and then the uh, the seed will be fructified and later we will have that either a positive or a negative reaction of that it might come in some uh, time or in some years or maybe in next uh, birth or next lifetimes to come so that is one of our learnings uh, in bhagavad gita 15.8 uh, it is mentioned about the souls as it transmigrates from one body to another body uh basically the present body and uh, the uh, uh, present activities uh, which stays with the uh, uh, which are there uh, when at the time of the death will get carried forward to the next one so based on which one gets the different body according to his karma even in uh, bhagavad gita 14.4.14 it is said which is the vedanta sutra uh, also it is quoted there 2.1.34 it is confirmed that no, uh, lord is not partial to any living entities like mata ji mentioned shri sha mata ji mentioned that we are basically need not have to blame others for our um, uh, karma so in that way basically every living entities are uh, having their uh, karmic reactions to their own past activities so the river, their each living entity is responsible for own act so just taking a example of dhritarashtra in one of his previous lifetime he was a ignorant king, kill, uh, king who killed almost like 100 birds and on one of the swan he made him blind uh, it was his uh, you know like a ignorant act but after few years he was born as a you know like dhritarashtra and he was born as a blind as that uh, one of the part of that reaction and even his 100 son were killed in the war of kurukshetra so he has to wait until that particular uh, he has to wait for many more uh, lifetime to come in order to have that reaction so another point is basically uh, a special benediction what uh, prabhu ji has mentioned in the previous uh, session uh, harishchandra prabhu in bhagavad gita 4.2.40 uh, basically it is a human life it's very a benediction for us uh, from this point Uh, we can go higher or lower like uh, punit prabhu ji brought in the point of uh, we are in the midpoint so where exactly this midpoint is so it's a it's a visual diagram which is uh, shown here this is a segment where we are uh, having the first starting point for this particular lifetime is birth and then we approach toward death and as this happens 
we are having multiple choices in between the entire lifetime is an opportunity for us to change whether to go higher or lower based on our choices so this is the midpoint the midpoint is basically having this particular human life it itself is a midpoint with each uh, the c which is in between it stands for choices that we make if we make the choices in order to uh, have uh, the krishna consciousness progress uh, to be done in krishna consciousness or basically uh, put our best endeavor to understand what is who is krishna what is our relationship with krishna and try to approach uh, and listen submissively to the scriptures that's the way we approach and do the best choices which are helpful for our krishna consciousness and to change our destination that is having the power of doing, doing so so at the bottom it is basically advised by sri chaitanya mahaprabhu who is chaitanya mahaprabhu he is none other than krishna himself in the age of this kali he says it three times just to make sure that we understand it very accurately there is no other alternative there is no other alternative there is no other alternative for the spiritual progress than the holy name the holy name the holy name of the of the lord so basically we need to chant the holy name in order to make that right choice to progress in krishna consciousness and go higher and liberate and get liberation from this world rather than degrade ourselves in this material world hari krishna prabhu ji if you could go to the next slide hari krishna so this is the one of the purport and lectures which are given by shila prabhu pat in los angeles uh, it uh, refers to uh, sri ishopina mantra 1.1 to 4 so these are the actual words spoken by shila prabhu pat he says there are heaps of sinful reaction in our lives uh, for so many lives in this material world so it is not just this lifetime but we have been taking this sinful reaction from past many lives so as soon as we surrender to krishna immediately krishna takes care of you and he manages how to adjust all the sinful reactions krishna says don't hesitate if you think oh i have committed so many sinful activities how krishna will save me so the clear answer is no krishna is all powerful and he can save you your business is to surrender unto him and without any reservations and dedic and dedicate your life to his service and you will be saved and he says that thank you and chant hare krishna so basically it's very clear uh, instruction from sila prabhu pad that we need to uh, you know like uh, submissively chant the holy name of the lord and that's the process where we can get Uh, liberated and uh, the past karmic reactions we can get rid of them hari krishna any any thoughts adipak prabhu ji or or, or the rest of mata ji's prabhu ji thank you prabhu ji for nice summarization of the passage so any anyone has any question or uh, any comment thank you prabhu ji it's so clear like especially that b c and d thank thank you mata ji so basically we can always keep in mind we started our lifetime with birth and this is the death what we are going to embrace and everybody is uh, going to uh, going with the same uh, uh, flow in the life all we have is common is to make the right choices and to submissively chant the holy name of lord shri just uh, one question uh, kuntal prabhu ji uh, regarding uh, the choices i think uh, it's very evident that everyone has a birth everyone uh, is uh, moving towards or inching towards the death but uh, when it comes to choices uh, maybe all the choices we make in this uh, uh, you know journey of life uh, we say that it's it's a right choice or it's a wrong choice but uh, we never know like uh, what is completely right what is completely wrong because we are not having that uh, you know uh, complete spiritual knowledge from the start of our life you know or or even today uh, we are having some directions but uh, the decisions we make today we are not 100% sure whether it is you know completely right or completely wrong so how do we you know uh, come out of this uh, delusion 
Thank you, Prabhuji. Santosh Prabhuji very rightly said. So uh, I would request Deepak Prabhu to add as well. So the first key point is basically asking the question, what is best for me in Krishna consciousness? So uh, we have heard about the nine process of devotional service. That is hearing, chanting, remembering, serving lords, lotus feet, that uh, deity worship, praying, and uh, uh, carrying out the activities which are really helpful for Krishna consciousness, becoming friend with Krishna and surrendering unto him. Any activities which we uh, which we want to take or we take to want to uh, to uh, take a decision on or make a choice on, we have to ask ourselves whether it is in favor of Krishna consciousness or it is against. Like for instance, today everybody has assembled here. It is a weekend. We could have easily gone to malls and enjoyed and maybe uh, having uh, you know like lunch there or, or dinner there, whatever we could have done for our movie. But the choice what everybody has made today is to come to this and listen to uh, the Bhakti Viksha, what are the lessons learned and how we can implement in our life. So the practicing all of these chanting of the holy name and wherever we find that okay we need to make a decision asking the basic question whether this is uh, helpful for my krishna consciousness or whether it is uh, going to impact my krishna consciousness okay thank you prabhuji Deepak Prabhu, if you want to add your yes, realization prabhuji. yeah so just uh, prabhuji has rightly uh, mentioned that uh, whatever is favorable for krishna consciousness and for pleasing the cloud that we should uh, do and for that we need uh, some guidance right so that's what uh, we can always ask our seniors or whoever is uh, senior to us in spiritual life or in practicing krishna consciousness we can just take their help whenever we are facing this issue that what what is right for me or not because there is no uh, means it's not uh, zero and one it means every uh, not uh, in, in this life uh, something could be right for me, but not for you uh, at that situation, right? So, uh, but again, if we are going with the scriptures, Vedic scriptures, then uh, we, we should understand the, the, uh, the what is the rightiest thing. And uh, for that, we should approach our seniors, spiritual leaders or guru or whoever is higher in this spiritual realization. So we can just take their help and... Uh, we can uh, we can ask our, uh, uh, this particular uh, as per our particular situation. So they will guide us as per the Vedic uh, wisdom only, Vedic knowledge only, that what is right. So Thank you, Prabhu. Yeah. So uh, let's move forward, where everyone will have a chance to share from Bhagavad Gita, uh, one one shloka. So uh, let's uh, start from Bhagavad Gita one dot nine. Right from uh, chapter one, uh, ninth shloka. So, Shirisha Mataji, you would like to share a few points what you liked yes, or what yes. is given in the, yeah. Yes, so I'll quickly start with the um, shloka and then followed by the purport. So, it states that Anyecha Bahavaha Shura Madhate Tyapta Jeevitaha Nana Shastra Praharana Sarve Yutta Visharadaha. So uh, a context before this is, uh, it is the title of the battlefield, uh, wherein Dhritarashtra asked Sanjaya what is happening in the battlefield. So that is what uh, was, I mean, Sanjaya, Sanjaya could see what is happening and he gives Dhritarashtra what is happening in the battlefield. That is how the context goes around for the first eight slokas. So wherein uh, it is being said that uh, there are a lot of shuras like in the previous lokas like Bhishma, Karna, Ashwatthama who are there in the battlefield. Now here what has been basically said is Chakta Jeevitaha. So uh, there are some fighters apart from the above mentioned like Jayatrata and all who are here uh, to like Ratavarma, uh, Shalya and all. They are there on the side of Duryodhana. So it has been mentioned, though they have been on the side of Duryodhana, it is predestined that they are going to die for Krishna. It is not die for Krishna. It is like they are anyways going to die. It is all a predecided uh, arrangement of Krishna. And these people are going to die. That is what Krishna is indirectly telling at the st starting of this shloka that uh, these people, however, uh, because of their uh, whatever the sinful activities or karmic reaction, these people are going to die in the Kurukshetra. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. That is Thank what you. 
Yeah, thank you, Mataji. So, uh, Deepak Raj Prabhu for 10th Shloka, you would like to share a few points? Uh, yes, yes Prabhu, I will be sharing 1.10 verse. Uh, the Shloka is Aparyapnam Tad Asmakam Balam. You can skip Prabhu Shloka recitation. You can directly okay. go to Yes, Prabhu. Okay, directly go to Purpur Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. Your realization yeah. or few points. Yeah. Yeah, sure. uh, here, uh, um, uh, the Bhishma is actually, the in short, the realization is here. Uh, Dur uh, Bhishma is very, uh, Duryodhana was always envious of Bhima and he was, uh, and he was always proud uh, that uh, Pandavas will be, uh, having, uh, Pandavas are having very little strength and uh, I'm having a lot of army and I can defeat the Pandavas any, any way. And uh, Bhima is also a type of mil uh, military general who is having less knowledge and he don't know how to uh, tackle the war. So his proudness only is speaking in this 1.10 uh, 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 verse. Uh, I'll just read Puppet in short. Uh, here, here in an estimation of comparative strength is made by Duryodhana. He thinks that the strength of his armed forces is immeasurable, being specially protected by the most experienced general grandfather Bhishma. On the other hand, the forces of the Pandavas are limited, being protected by a less experienced general Bhima, who is like a fig in the presence of Bhishma. Duryodhana was always envious of Bhima because he knew perfectly well that if he should if he should die at all, he would only be killed by Bhima. But at the same time, he was confident of his victory on account of the presence of Bhishma, who was a far superior general. His conclusion that he would come out of the battle victorious was well ascertained. Here, uh, the main point, what uh, the 1.10 verse is speaking is uh, that Duryodhana was always uh, proud of him and he underestimates other people. Uh, so that uh, proud, he, uh, and he also underestimates Pandavas and he also underestimates Bhima. Uh, so uh, this is the this is what which is speaking in the verse and however the latter part, how uh, this tackling of the war and will be discussed in the next uh, verses of uh, uh, our uh, Bhagavad Gita session. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Prabhuji. So, next, uh, yeah, Prabhuji, here, uh, till 10th shloka, he was, uh, uh, Duryodhana was uh, diplomatically speaking and he was taunting and glorifying uh, Bhishma uh, and uh, Dronacharya. So, now he is telling, uh, Duryodhana was telling, um, instructing soldiers. Uh, to take place uh, in front of uh, your martial troops and protect Bhishma alone. Because as Bhishma is old, so uh, Duryodhana wants the soldiers to protect him from all the sides. So uh, that's uh, the uh, meaning of the shloka. And here the Prabhuji has uh, given a very good point, saying that association will decide our destination. So, uh, and also given the example of the karma, because he, he was with the bad associate, so uh, the end was really bad, because he was uh, supporting uh, Duryodhana. So, Karma, uh, Karna is a very good person, but when he's putting the bad person, then the end will be bad. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you, Mataji. So, next, Amrita Mataji. Uh, yes, Prabhuji. So, uh, like uh, verse 12, it says, uh, Bhishma, the grandfather of the fighters, blew his conch shell very loudly and it was making a sound like the roar of a lion. And uh, this blowing of the conch shell indicates multiple things. First is like when the conch shell was blown, Duryodhana felt very much joy in his heart and uh, that was helping him to drive away the fear which was there. And secondly, also Bhishma announced that he is ready to give up his life for doing his duty. And thirdly, at the same time, he Bhishma also informed to Duryodhana that he had no chance of victory in the battle as the Supreme Lord Krishna is on the other side. Because the council represents Vishnu and Vishnu is one of the avatar of Lord Krishna and Krishna is on the other side. So it indicates that uh, Duryodhana will never, <laughs> like uh, he, he had not, no chance of, of victory in the battle. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Mataji. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Panit Prabhuji. Next two shlokas. Uh... Yes, Prabhuji. So, so uh, here it is in 1.13. We see that after that, you know, the conch shells, uh, drums, trumpets, and, you know, all other instruments. So, they were sounded and uh, the combined sound was tumultuous. Means, uh, it's, uh, you know, turbulent. So 
instrumentalist means very turbulent uh, sound was created and then uh, on the other side uh, uh, in bhagavad gita 14 1.14 uh, both lord krishna and arjuna uh, on a great chariot uh, sounded the, their transcendental conscience so here shila prabhupada explaining in the purport that uh, they are called as transcendental because uh, when krishna is on arjuna side so there is only uh, win and uh, because uh, Lord is present there, uh, the goddess of fortune uh, is also present there because uh, 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 goddess of fortune will always associate only with her husband. So uh, this is the you know sign of the victory for Arjuna also uh, because you know uh, these kind of transcendental conscious and uh, also uh, Lord Vishnu. Uh, uh, Kong shell and uh, Arjuna Kong shell uh, were blown together. So that's it, Prabhuji Mam, from my side. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Pranit Prabhu, for sharing. Uh, Sakshi Mataji, shloka number 15. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Uh, so in uh, in this verse, uh, Krishna is addressed as Vishikesha. Vishikesha means controller of senses. Uh, Krishna's conscience name is Panchjanya. And Arjun is referred as Dhananjaya, and Arjun's conscious name is Devdatya. Bhim, Bhim's conscious name is Pondarya. So here uh, in this verse, they are mentioning everyone's conscious name and they begin to blow their conscience. So this is mentioned. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. So Santosh Prabhu, 16 to 18 verse. Yeah, so uh, this, this is a combination of three shlokas. Uh, what what uh, we have in this is like uh, the king Yudhishthir here. Uh, he is you know uh, blowing his uh, conch. That is Anant Vijaya and Nakul Chadev. They are you know blowing their conches. Sugosh and uh, Mani Pushpak. And there is an excellent archer, uh, king of the Kashi. And there is also a great warrior Shikhandi, uh, Drishtadyum, Virat, and there are uh, Satyaki, Drupad. So there are five sons of uh, Draupadi and there's the mighty army, uh, no, Abhimanyu is the son of Subhadra. So all are blowing their respective conch shells and uh, they are, you know, uh, making that uh, like looking like a, you know, a ruler of the earth. So what is happening here is uh, since Yudhishthira is the eldest Pandava, he is being addressed as the king and uh, he, is, he is addressed as a king because he has always displayed a royal grace mobility wherever you know there is a living uh, in a palace or whether he is living in a forest while he was you know in the exile so he also got this uh, title because he performed one uh, rajya suga yagya this was a royal sacrifice uh, which he has done which earned him this uh, tribute for all the other kings of the world that you know he is the king of uh, the world and uh, he was known as Maharaj Yudhishthir. So uh, in this verse, what is happening is Sanjay is also telling uh, Dhrizarashtra that uh, there is a ruler of earth and uh, the real reason, you know, why this appellation was uh, reminded because he would need, his duties uh, is not a ruler of country, he is a ruler of the earth. So he need uh, so many, uh, you know, uh, appreciations from other kings and the princes who are participating from both the side of this wars. And it was for the entire earth. So it was split into two parties, but uh, everybody knew that who is the winner. So before uh, this war could end, everybody knows, uh, you know, who has done more uh, auspicious and biased activities, who has done better yagyas, better activities, or, you know, uh, given his duties in the best way. And it was definite uh, that after this, you know, biggest war that was Mahabharat, uh, what could be reversible, uh, you know, is, is the destruction which is happening. But the only person who could stop this war uh, at this juncture was uh, Dhritarashtra and Sanjay. They wanted to know if uh, he was willing to do that. So they're looking at, you know, uh, all these aspects of uh, Mahabharata. Thank you so much, everyone. Very nice uh, discussion and very nicely you all explained on this uh, different verses, verses in different shlokas uh, really it's 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 good when we uh, ourselves 
try to read try to watch those videos and uh, try to understand the shloka and uh, share in this forum right so uh, it, it's really helping i hope everyone is enjoying this exercise and uh, by that we are uh, we are able to read the bhagavad gita also right deeply right we can understand we can read the purports also so many things are there in the purports so let's uh, i'll request satyajit prabhu to uh, summarize once so uh, uh, yes prabhu ji no? so i'll just yeah so yeah. i think all prabhu ji and mata ji one another they have taken uh, this uh, uh, different words starting from 9 to 18 and they have uh, uh, i mean clearly and very good uh, understanding what they have expressed here however i'll go quickly uh, to recap the summary uh, so here in this uh, verse 9 as we know that in verse 8 it was duryodhana talking to his teacher dronacharya about uh, the army men of pandava and his army it is basically the comparison between them and uh, glorifying that how their army is more powerful who is commanding who is taking uh, the responsibility so in that aspect uh, it was verse 9 uh, sorry 8 and now in verse 9 it is mentioned that uh, not only those uh, powerful uh, uh, big uh, you know army are there but still there are other powerful people and great hero also who are export and uh, equipped with the different Uh, weapons or strong weapons who are ready to give their life as well for uh, duryodhana so that is what it is mentioned and uh, and then the next uh, verse 10 uh, it is it is again uh, duryodhana glorifying his army and uh, and and saying that okay the forces of pandava are very limited and it is uh, again i mean carried by bhima he is having limited you know knowledge of uh, or or knowledge or power because he knows that if only someone he is going to get killed in this uh, war then it will be bhima so that is why in the meantime in his mind also there are little doubt but at the same time he is glorifying and saying that the pandavas they are having very limited resource and they are only guarding by bhima and all but in our side it is all uh, you know uh, powerful and martial by uh, big uh, grand uh, sire bhishma he is he is he is he is saying that and also he is hinting that okay this um, uh, this uh, bhishma is also having little subkarna towards the pandava so all other uh, army you also participate in more strength because you will have to uh, fulfill that weakness or cover up that weakness about the bhishma it is it is his doubt actually what to what he is mentioning so you can go to the verse 11 here duryodhana talk about the rest of the soldier because there are all other independent soldiers were there and he is saying that uh, there is not only this big powerful soldier are there but you people also having important roles so that you'll have to guard uh, uh, great bhishma because he is uh, the old man now uh, might be he will get uh, you know uh, uh, what i can say uh, different, different he, he might be he will get attacked by different people and different forces and different side so to guard him you also have some specific roles and responsibility in this war so you'll have you, you are no other than uh, you know just a soldier in my in my i'm force but you have also specific roles and responsibility you are going to play a bigger role that is what he is uh, quantifying or qualifying to towards their soldier so in verse 12 uh, it is about the pitama bhishma the grand old man of the kuru dynasty the glorious patriarch bhishma rode like a lion and blew his conch shell very loudly giving joy to duryodhan so it is just starting of the war for that uh, pitama vis blew his uh, consel so it is it is like we are going to start i am ready for this war and uh, in this war i am going to die for you 
it is just giving some uh, you know support towards the duryodhana so that he will be happy and uh, at the same time the counsel i mean when when blowing the counsel it means or it indicate multiple things which is mentioned in other point like blowing up counsel also means as khetriya dharma here bhishma announce ah, he is ready to die for duryodhana and other part is this this conch used for different arti it also represents lord bhishma and lord bhishma is one of form of krishna so here krishna is with pandavas so this is all you know connection so means other side also indicate to duryodhana that no chance of victory against pandava and krishna since krishna is on the other side so in chapter uh, 1 verse 13 to 14 in this uh, verse it is mentioned about the council blew by not only bhishma and other i think each and every uh, other instrument were used by in the battlefield uh, prabhu ji like, uh, we have to be little quick so yeah, yeah. into so kettle drums bugles trumpet and horns these are different different instrument which were uh, used at the uh, time of uh, the war and it create uh, a overwhelming sound which 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 called i think somewhere mention it uh, the pandemonium means uh, what it called uh, tumultuous sound it is mentioned uh, and here also it is mentioned that uh, <coughs> the pandava army seated in a glorious chariot drawn by white horse madhava it is other name of krishna and arjun blew their divine counsel as well and the uh, kaurava army had started to win i mean had to you know vanish or disappear uh, when 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 they have complete their uh, blowing the counsel then started by this uh, uh council of madhava and arjuna basically so uh, from the pandava side seated on a magnificent chariot and supreme lord sri krishna and arjuna both blew their uh, council interpretedly which ignited the enthusiasm of the pandava army as well so it also ignited the pandava's army that okay not only you we also ready for the war and here madhava uh, means there is the meaning why it is mentioned madhava uh, and then uh, refers to goddess lakshmi and prosperity of uh, uh, dhav is used for the bhajvan so prabhu ji you can go to the next okay in this bus it is about the pandava uh, like uh, mention pandava there i think uh, many army including the uh, five brothers but it is mentioned specifically to arjuna and madhava means krishna and hrishikes as uh, mentioned like controller of senses you know a blue his counsel and uh, that is called the panchajanya arjuna also blew devadatta and bhim the veracious eater and performer of herculean task means who can take uh, big task they also blew mighty kanch called pandra and in this was uh, sri krishna address as rishikesh that already mentioned he is honor of all saints and uh, who who it's krishna that everyone know as uh, rishikesh like so arjuna the lord situated in everyone's heart and as i am paramatma directing the living entity and directing the senses of all creature and entity it is it is just a uh, you know um, knowledge giving uh, and or indicating that okay hey arjuna you know that lord situated uh, everyone's heart and i am paramatma directing all living entity that is what uh, it 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 means or indicate so aaj 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 arjuna is the pure devotee of krishna so it is mentioned here in case of pure devotee when surrender to supreme lord krishna takes charge controlling the devotee and one example here in this verse mentioned as krishna is taking complete charge of arjuna and his chariot as arjuna is pure devotee of krishna so many other name also uh, mention here as like different personality like rishikesh madhusudana the killer of madhu demon and gobinda protector of couch and vasudeva is uh, the son of vasudev devaki nandan jasoda nandan and parthasarathi thank you prabhu ji so 
uh, we are going back to main room. So one of the devotee can share the some realization. I mean, with the group. Amrish Prabhu, you have not said anything. You please. Anybody would like to share, or anybody else is ready? Yes, Santos Prabhu, you want to share? Please go. Ahead. Yeah, Hare Krishna Prabhuji. I think uh, we were just uh, finishing our verse discussion and the summary by uh, Satyajit Prabhu. Okay. So, okay. so we discussed, I think, uh, in detail about the passage uh, mm -hmm. and and the learning about uh, mm -hmm. whatever we are uh, today in this uh, mm -hmm. life or the journey of life. We are at you know some mm -hmm. position. So mm -hmm. that is because we have made some choices uh, due mm -hmm. to our karmas of this life and maybe in the previous lives. And uh, if we continue is uh, continuously work towards this uh, journey of uh, spiritual. Uh, you know, uh, knowledge gaining and then doing some good chanting and learning about uh, Bhagavad Gita. I think uh, one thing is for sure, uh, whatever we will learn in this life, you know, for the remaining uh, days before uh, the death, I think uh, it will be definitely giving us a lot of knowledge uh, to, uh, you know, uh, to behave in a particular way for, you know, the upcoming situations and, and not react uh, and, you know, be angry on everything which is happening around us. So yes. thank you, thank you very much. Really so basically, we were discussing that we will be putting you know, our money in the eternal account, which will exponentially grow, and not like any stock exchange or you know or cryptocurrency. <laughs> we are exactly the money. We just a matter of time goes down, or whatever we have learned, you know, we have to learn again, right? So yes, that's the we see some wonderful devotees here progressing, you know, so nicely because last life they have done something wonderful. Thank you, Sandrasko. Anybody okay. else? Yes, Dalapati Rao, you want to share something? Uh, yes, I just saying, Jay Sri Krishna, sir. Hare Krishna. Yes, you know, yes, sir. Prabhuji is CA. You know, he knows yes, where sir. to invest. You know? Uh, yeah, <laughs> so know now we know. Knows, but uh, generally, sir, I, I just take two minutes. Uh, yes, generally, sir. people do reverse, sir. I'm very sorry to say that. Market me kya hota, sir? Jab market gir jata hai, jab actually buy karna chahiye. People will do reverse. That yeah. is the basic thing. Yes, yes. People should wait and see about the market. Then yes. I think they will be getting yes. the good. Uh, that's what you know. That's what it is, right? Like you know, because this kali yoga is the lowest yoga. You know, the manda, sumanda, mata, mando, bhagya, upatishna. It is so degraded as. And yahan pe the best thing is you know available in the cheapest price. <laughs> but people are not recognizing it, as you said. Yes. You know? Yes. Uh, this Kali Yoga, me, this holy name is so easy process. And once you just take it, we get so much of returns. You know, uh, today I was hearing there's a nice verse, you know, just say like, you know, a dhani as a person, you know, bichayani, bichayani, bichantyani, puna, puna, kripanani, dhanani, tan, namami, bhavat, nama. You know, you have a devotee is praying that just like a person who is so accustomed to count money, you know, collect money. Remember how much I have done it. Similarly, a devotee also, you know, he also collects the holy name. He also, you know, collects, you know, knowledge from the scriptures. He collects, you know, the, you know, the sevas, you know, from the devotees. And then he wants to do more and more. He wants to count. Oh, I want, I did one round today. Okay, I'll do two rounds today. And just like a dhani bhakti, he wants to get more and more money. And you know, similarly, a devotee also wants to get more and more and more. You know? Yeah, actually, um, in the session, somebody is asking how many times uh, this uh, Hare Krishna mantra should be japo, should be done. So ah, yes, I think uh, should... we we discussed like in Hare Krishna Prabhu also said like in, yes, Lord, I said Kirtaniya Sadahari, but at least we have to start somewhere. Yes. You know, okay, at least start chanting yes. one round every day, and then okay, then we can progress two rounds, four rounds, and then Prabhupada said that you know at some point in time we should mature ourselves to chant sixteen rounds every day, but at least. Let's start with one round. Let's start with two rounds. Let's start with four rounds. And you know, because on that you know, Gita course also you remember, right? Start small and do increments, right? Instead of so, we may pura hi kar leta hoon, fir, you know, just a new year resolution type of hai, right? We start something big and next day it somebody, falls down. <laughs> somebody is asking when they're outside or when they're in office, they can do it. But uh, yes, right. what do you say on that? I'm asking. So, so on that also, yes, like you know, Bhagavan Lord is saying, you know, in in uh, Bhagavad Gita, Tasmat Sarvesu Kalesu Maam Anuswar Avkhyasa. You do your duty and always remember me. Yes, it's not that okay, you know, I'm studying at the same time remembering. No, at that time of study, you just focus on your study uh, because then you become more focused, not getting anywhere else. 
you know, I'm doing my work. Yes, I'm doing, you know, my work. But at the same time, there are some activities just like, you know, cooking. Cooking can be done, like, you know, okay, we can hear Kirtan and we can cook, you know, uh, we can uh, uh, take care of our household, like personal chores early in the morning by hearing Kirtan. There are some activities that we can do multitasking, but for some of the activities like studying or, you know, some work, you know, as much as possible, you can do, you know, <laughs> avoid multitasking. But at the same time, we do that activity for the pleasure of the Lord. And that it means Ma Manusmara Yudha. It means I'm doing this, you know, my job, I'm doing my, you know, cooking, I'm doing my study for the pleasure of the Supreme Lord. That I remember. Correct, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, Hare Krishna. Okay, anybody else uh, from uh, Radha Shyam Sundar or Radha Govind? Yes, anybody please quick. We are running out of time. Shirisha like Mataji uh, would like to go share something. Okay, so well, like Prabhuji said from Radha Gopinath, uh, from our uh, Santos Prabhu, would like to hear from Radha Govind or Radha Shyam Sundar. Yes, Hare Krishna Prabhuji, jo aaj ka paisas tha isse jo humne mukh sikha, ki jo bhi hum is jan mein karte hain, ya pichle jan mein humne jo bhi karm kiye hain, चाहे अच्छे हों या बुरे हों उसका हमें फल मिलता है वो अगले जन कई जन्मों जन्मांतर तक वो कैरी करता है अगर हमें इससे छुटकारा पाना है मुक्ति पाना है तो उसका एक ही साधन है कि हमें कृष्णा कॉन्सियसनेस को अपनाना होगा साथ साथ दूसरों के प्रति दया भाव रखना होगा और जो भी हम कर्म करते हैं उसे हमें निष्काम भाव से करके भगवान को अर्पित करना होगा कम शब्दों में कहें तो अकर्म करके हम इस सभी से मुक्ति पा सकते हैं और भगवान कहते हैं अगर आप ऐसा कुछ करते हैं तो अंत में आप मोक्ष के यानी हमें प्राप्त कर सकते हैं जय श्री कृष्ण मेरे पास आ सकते हैं वेरी गुड थैंक यू यशंत बहुत अच्छा से समरी किया आपने वेरी नाइसली समराइज थैंक यू वेरी मच एनीबडी एल्स वुड लाइक टू शेयर फ्रॉम राधा गोविंद बिफोर वी प्रोसीड योर प्लीज यू सर yeah so we uh, everybody discussed about the verse all the was pretty much well explained by everybody and it's basically tells about the karma and how how do we associate with the people and the associations and the so practicing spirituality and devoting the service in day to day activities so in summary yes. what i can say very good very good and just maybe in a one minute i know we are running out any feedback on the sessions that we have been conducting like we are coming together we did the breakout sessions i know we are getting little late we are still uh, you know getting stabilizing uh, but any thoughts uh, we want to change i know uh, there are so many participants they want to share so many things but we have a limited time uh, any questions comments uh, anybody would like to share uh, on the here. pattern i share here Uh, yes, Mataji, please go ahead. Uh, Prabhuji, uh, it is said that the greatness of Guru is known by his disciple, and uh, the the lectures we have been asked to listen to uh, of Bhagavad Gita, uh, we listen uh, his grace Kartikeya Das's lessons. So he explains it so well. I am truly, I mean, I I really feel that he has been truly blessed by his Guru Maharaj. Very well, very well. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Mataji. Because much. he has totally understood it so nicely, and uh, there are various concepts which we are hearing for the first time. Because I personally have not read Mahabharata, though I have seen the Ramayana sagas Mahabharata, but I didn't know certain details which he explains why uh, before he explains something further. So very, good, very good. Uh, such detailed explanation is like uh, mm-hmm. we have been asked to read. one chapter a day but it this book is like a suspense thriller i can't wait in i mean i can't just stop in one verse i keep on reading further further until something else comes up <laughs> to stop me otherwise uh, if if you ask me to sit and read i might read the whole book altogether <laughs> so it, it, it's it's really really nice. so uh, it depends on the storyteller Uh, very, how you uh, how you understand the story and it really captures you oh, wow i mean this is thank what i was missing all these years <laughs> hey krishna hare krishna thank you mataji anybody else before we proceed for the narsimha prana any other thoughts on the content or the structure of our program or maybe if you have anything please do share with me offline guru ji initial the, the thought is very good sir what is the purpose of life the initial mm-hmm. discussion was very very good 
is explained you. bhagavad gita 7.4 7.5 okay thank you uh, thank what you. is our uh, relationships so very that good. is very good sir initial discussion thank you, thank you In, uh, to be frank i jotted down actually i got three four pages <laughs> i have the habit of jotting from the studying when i am studying from ca so i just very jot it out to see it very yes you know we should we should note it down because sometimes our poor memory you know cannot remember so many things yes. now as we study and this is the most important scripture this is the most important manual for our life you know we should keep it for our life this is the true treasure you know? i want i want from you what are that nine types of uh, uh, we'll send it we have discussed okay. in our bhagavad gita session we'll send it yeah. to you i'll send that to you thank okay. you yeah okay so i would request now i think is it asura mathe ji who will lead who will be leading our Yes, Prabhu Ji, very much excited. Please go ahead. So last time we had shared the video with everybody. You know, if you would like, you can also come forward and sing Namaste Narsi Maya. So today, Sri Mata Ji has volunteered to sing. Yeah, please continue, Mata Ji. Sri Sri Narsi Nadeep Bhagwan ki jai, Sri Prahlad Maharaj ki jai. Yes. Yes. Namaste Narasimhaya Namaste Narasimhaya Prahlad Lath Gaine Prahlad Lath Gaine Niranya Kasit Vakshaha ಶಿಲಾ yato yato yami tato nasimha yato yato yami tato nasimha bahi nasimha hridaye nasimha bahi nasimha hridaye nasimha nasimha madim sharanam prabhati ಪ್ರಹ್ಲಾದ್ ಮಹಾವಿಷ್ಣು ಜಲಂದ 
Vedam Sarvado Mukam Narasim Ham Vishnam Vedam Pratyur Mrityur Namam Yaham Jai Narasim Ha Sri Narasim Ha Jai 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 Narasim Ha Jai Pahla Desha Jai Patma Muka Jai Patma Vringa Uru Jai Sri Narasim Shivagwan Ki Jai 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 Pahla Maraj Ki Jai Jai Thank you very much, Aishwarya Amartya Ji. That was a very... It was my mom singing along with me. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amartya Ji. It was wonderful. Hare Krishna. Uh, yes, I would really like to thank you once again. I'm a little... Sorry Thanks for the debate. Thanks for the opportunity, Prabhu Ji. <laughs> I am always open for Harinam Sankirtan. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yes. <laughs> All of you are so enthusiastic to chant and hear and... You know, ready. <laughs> All of your presence. Huh? Thank you very much. 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 Thank you very much.